Phone training today, as you can see, welcome to phone training. A um, couple things about me, I'm from Wisconsin, so we'll have the cheese head jokes as appropriate. Uh, the humor is not actually very good, but it is laughable. Um, at least with a courtesy laugh, we'll get on just fine. Um, we just try not to make it painful, right? That's the whole point. So you can laugh at the scary ball biker guy, it's okay. Um, I'm wearing my uniform, I've got the goatee, the shaved head, and the earring, so I'm just missing. <laughs> uh, we're going to be going through how to use the phone, we're going to go through the hardware and the software that's behind it to a certain extent, so we will make some phone calls. You are encouraged to handle the phone, keeping in mind of course that people also have been handling the phones this week, so try not to lick them or anything, that would be a little weird. Uh, we're going to talk about the changes that you're going to have in voicemail. There are some significant changes to voicemail. So. Definitely tune in for that. There are some handouts. The handouts are also available um, at the CIS webpage here, the bottom of that list. Um, that's why I am not handing out the handouts. We're trying to not kill any more trees than necessary. Take a look at the PDF, okay? If you need to print it, print it. But it's a four-page PDF. If you don't need to print it, don't print it. Cool? Cool. All right. Um, if somebody's just absolutely desperate for it, in two days I've handed out one. I'm willing to. <laughs> Try not to have the prints more that are just going to get left on desks for you know the next four months until somebody says, oh, yeah, it's a phone, I know it. Okay, I'll throw it out, right? Um, without further ado, let's begin. Cool? You all have phones in front of you. We've got an even number of people for the most part, so we'll have to work with <clears throat> who we partner off with who when we get to making phone calls. Um, if you look at the phones, you all should have phones on your desk. Does anybody not have a phone on your desk at your desk? So you know what kind of phone you all have now. Please put your hand on the kind of phone you have at your desk. Okay, so that kind of tells me that we've got a mixed crowd, so I've got people using both phones. We do have the Cisco 7962 phone in this room. That's the gray phone, right? We also have the Cisco 79, I'm sorry, uh, 6921, that's the black phone further referred to as the black phone and the gray phone, respectively. Um, <coughs> that way we're not bombarding you with, with the numbers and it's just not even worth it. You'll find that in the hardware aspects of the phone there is a handset. Ta -da. Um, the handset covers up the speakerphone. The speakerphone microphone is down here on the bottom. You do not have to pick up the phone to talk <laughs> into the speakerphone. That would be silly. Right? There's a handset for that. Um, I say that because if it's sitting on your desk, this phone is enough speakerphone to power a conference call in a room this size. Okay, so you don't need to yell at it. I'm here! No, I'm like, it, it. You also don't need to drum on the desk or crinkle wrappers or <laughs> type on your right. keyboard. If you're going to do things like that, then you want to be sure to be on mute if you're on that conference call doing that, right? And mute is nice and bright and vibrant red. Go ahead and pick up the handset and hit the mute button. Now you know what the mute button looks like. It is in the same spot on both phones, the black phones and the gray phones. Um, it's near the handset on the black phones. It's over here on the right on the gray phones. And it looks the same, though, on both the cases. It's a microphone with a line through it. Right? Hang up the handset. It's like it says. The speakerphone button turns on the speakerphone. Go ahead and turn on the speakerphone. Turn off the speakerphone by doing the same thing again, pressing the button. So you don't need to do one of these numbers just to hang up the speakerphone. Because what you're doing is transferring the call to here and then slamming the phone down in somebody's ear, which is really unpolite. That's not even nice. It's okay. Oh god. That's I've even got a phone station for you. Slide in. Thank you. Now, who might you be? I'm Pat Ledour. Pat. Thank you, Pat. Okay. So, uh, the gray phones, there's a chunky button on the side that allows you to adjust the kickstand. Right? We call it a kickstand because I'm a biker. Um, the jokes aren't going to get any funnier. You just got to insert the courtesy <laughs> left there. So that allows you to decide how tall you want the phone to be sitting on your desk and based on how you're seated and whatnot, right? It's up to you. So go ahead and engage the phone, whichever phone you've got. 
the you know, the molten <laughs> Now, the black phones do not have multiple positions beyond two. Please do not do this, okay? Um, and it's because there's two little plastic tabs, and they're going to wear out. So if I have 25 different classes doing the same thing with black phones all the time, they're going to wear out. So it goes in one position or the other position. I try and keep it to once a day. So a little taller or a little flatter. You get two choices. Figure out which one you want. To get it off of there, you pull it down like you're going to break it off. And that's what it's going to feel like, but it, it comes out just fine. Okay? So, the phones. Um, if you adjust the volume, black phones, it's up and down, gray phones, it's left to right. If you adjust the volume, go ahead and do that, you're going to find that it adjusts the volume of the ringer, and you're going to find that it makes the red light flicker. Right? The red light flickering on the handset is what you're going to see when you have a call coming in, right? So if you hit speakerphone button again, oh, there you go, hit it one more time, and then adjust the light, that red light, okay? That red light is also going to be the, the red light that will glow solid steady red if you have a voicemail that is new, okay? So if you have a visual indication on your phone, you have voicemail. More about voicemail in a bit. Um, one more button about voicemail, as long as we're talking about voicemail, there's a messages button on your phone. It's the one that looks like an envelope. Please press the envelope button on the count of three. Yeah. <laughs> I can try and get us all the same. Speakerphone button hangs up on it. Oh, I know, it's a cacophony, right? The walls are closing. Exactly. That's why I was going to try and synchronize it. I know. It's even better if we get it in the round, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so the, the voicemail lady, that's a nice Cisco voicemail lady, and she will be pleasant with you every time. She won't hate you if you hang up on her. Um, she's going to be the person that answers. And if you're calling from your phone, you just hit the button. Okay? And she's going to ask you for your PIN number, your password. PIN number and password are synonymous terms. Um, if you're calling from anywhere else, she's going to be answering as though you're at that person's phone. So you're going to need to hit the star key in order to back out, and then she'll ask you for your user ID, which is your extension. User ID and extension are the same thing. Okay. Now, she's, all you're doing by hitting the messages button is dialing 4800. Same numbers as it always has been. So if you want to get into the voicemail system from your cell phone or whatnot, the process has not changed. It's still the same number. Right? But you can do it. You can dial in from your cell phone. You can listen to your messages and all that stuff. More about voice mail in a bit. Um, more buttons. We've got some more buttons to talk about. On the right-hand side of the black phones, you've got three buttons. There's a hold button. It's the one that looks like a handset with a line underneath it. There is a transfer button. It's that arrow with a head. And there's a conference call button. It's the three-head button. On the gray phones, on the right-hand side, we've got four buttons surrounding a question mark. There's directory, services, settings, and uh, messages, right? On the black phones, on the left-hand side, we've got a settings button, we've got a messages button, and we've got a directories button. Cool? So, if you're at a black phone, hit the settings button. That's the gear. One time, you're going to see call history. See that? Hit the select button. It's the one in between the up and down arrows. Little square button. Okay? And then you're going to see names and numbers. And you're going to see a little handset with an arrow, and that's which direction that arrow is, is telling you whether that was an inbound or an outbound call. Cool? That's your call history on the black phones. It is the only call history on the black phones. Cancel or exit on the soft keys. The soft keys are the buttons below the screen with labels on the screen. Incidentally, touching the screen does not do anything other than yield frustration and funny colors. No results will happen, right? So back out to the main screen. Gray phones hit the directories button. Gray phones, you have three different directories. The first three directories are missed calls, placed calls, received calls. And on the gray phones, they are separate, right? So you've got three different directories that you can access. Go ahead and surf down past personal directory to the Vassar directory.
black phone users, go ahead and hit your directories button. It's the one that looks like a little book. You have two directories in this list. You have personal directories and master directory. Please go down to the master directory and hit select. You are all now in the directories. You are all in the master directory, hopefully, if we've been following instructions correctly. From here, you have a first name field, and scrolling down, you'll find that there is a last name field and a number field. Scroll up to the first name field and enter the first two letters of your first name using the texting technique on the keypad. All right, I already did something wrong. I'm not where everybody else is. I will come in. And then first name, you're going to text it in. So in order to get an S, it's the seven key four times quickly. If you hit the seven key four times slowly, you're going to get four P's. And four P's, while nutritious, does not make an S. So first two letters of your first name, then the first two letters of your last name. And once you've entered those two things, go ahead and hit search. There's a backspace key on the screen. Yes. So, if I hit this, do I hold this down and go to, because I'm trying to get to L. Hit the 5 key quickly, 5, 5, 5. Oh, okay. oh you got lucky to have the first two letters of the first letters. It's okay. It's all right, that's on camera for posterity. Great, awesome, okay. So proud. All right, you find yourself? Okay. Gray phone users, you actually have a little bit more visibility. Do you see yourself and you see that there's a keypad next to your name? You all see that? That keypad is indicating, if it's just a keypad, a little grid icon, it's indicating that you have an account on the system, but you do not have a phone plugged in right now. If you have an old timey telephone, we're not on the same system, we're in a training environment. That's why it looks like that. If you have an old timey telephone on top of the keypad, you have a phone plugged into the system. If, on the other hand, your phone look, or your icon looked like two handsets side by side, that would indicate that the person in question is on the phone. Black phone users, you don't have that. It is what it is, right? Go ahead and exit, cancel, cancel, exit back out to the main screen. On the right hand side of the screen, on the gray phones, you will notice that there are six buttons. I'm sorry. I mean, go ahead and cancel exit, exit, exit cancel, okay. back out to the main screen. On the right hand side of the screen, you'll notice that there are six buttons. Those would be interpreted as lines. They are not. They are simply buttons. We can put anything we want on. We normally put your line on one of them, and that's going to be the first one. The secondary and tertiary buttons on that screen are going to be used for other things. They can be used for speed dials. They can be used for message waiting indicators, for shared voicemail boxes. We can put your boss's line on that so that you can answer the phone for your boss. We can put your boss's line on that, but you can't answer the phone. You can simply see if they're on the phone. We can do all kinds of different things with those buttons. Likewise, on the black phones, there's two buttons. They're even labeled one and two, for those of you that are numerically impaired. Um, you're going to find that these phones actually are capable of 256 calls at any given point in time. We don't do that to you. That would be cruel and unusual. We normally cap it off at about four, right? <clears throat> so you can have a couple of calls. If you have a call coming in, it will indicate call waiting if the phone company provided us with the call waiting information. Cool. Uh, the caller ID information, excuse me. So you're going to get caller ID. As long as the phone company gave us the information to give to you, you're going to get it. You will get it on a transfer, too. So if you're being transferred to call, you'll see it on the screen once the transfer is complete. Furthermore, you have call waiting and caller ID on call waiting. Call waiting does not work like it does at home, though. Call waiting at home was two beeps. Beep, beep, right? Based on the ring cycle duration. Call waiting here is one beep. So it's beep, and then that's it. You get 20 seconds to answer that call. Answering the call is a soft key on the screen, and it's going to say answer. You don't have that right now because you don't have a call waiting call coming in on the call you don't have right now, right? You follow me? <laughs> So the screen is very contextual. Based on the context of what you're doing at the time, the options will always be changing. Be sure to look at the screen. Y'all see the more button right now? Some of you have a more button. I think the gray phones right now 
Actually, you know what they don't. Go ahead and pick up the handset for me. Simon says pick up the handset. Then hit the more button. And then wait. Count to about five, and you'll notice that the more button will revert back to the original menu after about five seconds. Go ahead and sign that. Simon says hang up the handset. So here's the deal. You need to be watching what button you're hitting. Right? If the label changes, the function changed too. So don't just hit the more button, look away, and then expect it to be the same because it may not be the same anymore. Um, answer, if you have a second call coming in, will automatically put the first call on hold to answer the second call. You can use the arrow keys below the screen, the green arrow key, to navigate between the two calls and resume the, the held call will automatically hold the current call to resume the other call. To hold the current call to resume the other call. To hold the current call to resume the other call. As many times as you want to go back and forth. Cool. There's also a join key, which you don't have right now because you don't have two calls. The join button would allow you to join those two calls together and make them into a conference call on the fly. We will practice a conference call. We will not practice a uh, join. Uh, it's just it's a, you can do it. It's not, it's not terrible, but it's a little tough to do in, in this environment. So we won't do that. Uh, what we're going to do right now, though, is we're going to call each other. Okay. Um, and I'll probably pair up with you because that... I'm on. It's okay. <laughs> I've been that way for a while. <laughs> While you're calling each other, I'd like you to look at the screen before you answer. There's going to be a series of options on the screen that are only there when the phone is ringing. So I want to tell you about those when we're done with this process. And I'm going to ask you to put each other on hold. Okay, once you get each other on the phone, do it one at a time. So just both put each other on hold. That's that's not as much fun. Um, and then once you're done doing it one way, call each other the other way so that you can both see what the phone looks like when it rings, okay? Um, you'll find that the phone extension is on the screen, so just look at the screen for the phone extension. So go ahead and call each other. Please use the, the handset. If we all use speakerphone in this confined space, it's going to be like a bad rock concert. We don't want that. Okay. So, 
buy Dorothy. If you could transfer me to, okay. to your neighbor, please. Um, okay. Hold on, please. <laughs> <laughs> 5127. And then she picks up. Hello. Now I'm still on hold. Elizabeth, right? this strange man wants to speak to you. I'm on hold <laughs> automatically. Sure, sounds perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so I just hit transfer? Answer to get transfer again, and then I'm gone. You're done. Go back to your current options. And then it's you and me on the phone. Okay. Right? Um, once you hit transfer, you don't need to hit hold. As a matter of fact, if you put me on hold first, you will not be able to transfer me. Uh -huh. Right? If you try and transfer me and then you end up with the wrong person, you have to come back to me before you can transfer again. You can't just hit transfer again. Go ahead and transfer. Here's another one for you. If I'm angry, you have to go back to me. <laughs> right? Or you have to get the person that you got to transfer you. Hey, it's me. I'll just blame you. Oh, the software again. I have the best call Joe's Pizza. That's a good call. Right? Go ahead and transfer me to this first one. Five. Five on four, two. Set rattling trying to find the receiver button. Okay. Are you pause. connected? Yes. Yay! It works. Yes. Now, I also noticed that nobody said hello to the NSA 
That's okay. <laughs> so the question was asked, what happens if, I, if I'm trying to get to somebody and they don't answer? Then you would end call and then you have to resume me, right? Resume is the button. You have to go back to me in order to, to transfer again or to tell me that it's not going to work. You got to go to voicemail or whatever, but you have to come back to me. You can't just transfer again. You don't have to say anything. But you have to hit the resume button in order to have transfer be an option again. Now, here's a question. So if you transfer and they have their voicemail engaged, mm -hmm. then it would be okay to put them in. Mm -hmm. Correct? So you preempt that, Patty Joe. I'm not sure if they're at their desk, but if would you like their voicemail? Right, but here's the catch. Okay. Most of us record our, our messages with our name really pretty front loaded. Hello, you've reached Doug. Right? Mm -hmm. That took about 0.5 seconds for me to get out. And when you hear that and then hit transfer, I've already said my name. I won't be saying it again. You follow me? They won't be hearing it again. The message does not start over when you complete the transfer. They come in when you hit the button. So if you're going to send somebody to voicemail and you know it's voicemail, the more of the message you listen to, the less of the message I will hear when the transfer is completed. That's why you should just transfer it anyway. <laughs> well, it's actually, it's faster. <laughs> Again, I, I know I'm fighting you on this, but it's okay. It's, it's actually faster if you transfer, dial, transfer. Because your finger's right there already. Mm -hmm. it's, it's less time for you to do that motion. Right? If you want to go directly to voicemail, here at Vassar, it is pound and then the extension, okay? That will bypass all ringing. You will go directly to the message, and that's when it will definitely be important to use the button method and transfer, pound, number transfer. You catch that? It's real quick, because it goes instantly to voicemail, because it forwards right into the voicemail account. So can you go over that to directly to voicemail as pound number is transfer? Transfer to start the process. Okay. Pound in front of the number, mm -hmm. the number of course, and then transfer again, and then that second hit of the transfer button is right away. You got it. Okay. Quick. Because I'm already into the message, right? Mm -hmm. And again, it will not be repeated. So it's just food for thought. Cool. Questions. Alright, so we did a transfer. We transferred around the room. <laughs> so we, we had a call. question. Yes, I'm sorry. It, it's about voice now, though. Should I wait? Yeah, let's hang on to it for a minute. Is that okay? Um, let's do a quick conference call. We'll do uh, the room in two halves. So we'll go uh, U6 and then U5, okay? Uh, because the maximum number for conference calls happens to be eight, okay? Use the phone that you're going to be using at your desk. The people in the front row, so we'll send it from the front to the back, and the people in the front row look at your neighbor because only one of you is going to be starting the, the conference call process. Once we have everybody up and on the two calls, I'm going to ask you to do a couple things. So once you're on the call, I'm going to try and get your attention again, and um, stay on the call and wait for my direction, okay? Because I'm going to show you a couple things that you can only see when you're on the call, okay? So let's go ahead and start it. Call each other, call each other. Okay, so front row, once you've got that call started, one of you go ahead and send a call to the person in the back, so a uh, conference in the person behind you. She's going to use more oh, on the gray phone. Thank you. More, <laughs> more. Thank you. On the black phone, she will be using this button here. Okay. Sorry. 5140. Okay, black phone users. It's the three head button. Gray okay. phone users, it's a soft key on the more menu. Okay. Two calls. Oh, you got it. Go. And Hello. And you've got two oh, yes. uh -huh. she's on the other one. You've got a conference a second time. No, just and now, so what, should I make a conference? Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Yes.
Oh, yeah, so she's dying. Oh, yeah. So we're going to have one of them to conference the second time. Oh, uh, is it you? Conference? Oh, yeah. conference the second time? I think we're on two separate calls. Everybody's got it. Okay, yeah. so one of you pass it back to the macro. They passed it. She's got it now. Mm -hmm. just, what do I do? We, we only have those three, not those two. Yeah. So somebody's got to hit conference a second time somewhere. Do you have to hit conference? And I'll take one or two. Hi. Oh, oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. oh, you. You there you go. There you go. And then you should have everybody. Hello. Hello. Okay. Hello. 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 Yeah, so we have to stay on the phone. Now, the phone. Okay, so everybody had to hit conference. No. Are you guys there? So I'm you want to hit resume. Hit resume. I hear you back. So you had to oh, like, yeah. Yeah. resume. Okay. And then pick it up. There I'm here. Okay. Okay. On the right on. side of the room, your <laughs> right hand side, <laughs> are all six of you on? <laughs> How many people are on this conference call? It should be six. Oh. But I don't think it tells us. Does it? That's what the, what that so you got six of you over here. You got five of you over here. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So here's your instructions. More on the gray phones, and then conf list on the black phones. The button is details. Okay. So hit the details button. Once you found the list, hang up the phone, please. Sweet. Notice that the list will remain on the phone even though you are no longer on the call. So go ahead and hang up the phone once you find the list. Now, the list, as you scroll through the list, you will find that one of those names has an asterisk next to it. The asterisk is the designated conference owner, and in this environment here at Vassar, it makes no difference. Everybody has the same level of privilege. This is what it means. Anybody can remove somebody. Remove is an option. You see it on the screen. It won't do anything because you already hung up. Remove would allow you to kick somebody out. When you think about it, it's actually a very useful tool. If you can remove somebody, say you're a little too quick on the trigger, right? You hit conference, you dial my number, but you got my voicemail, but you already hit conference the second time to bring my voicemail into the call, right? Now everybody's hearing my message. Um, now re you're recording your conversation on my voicemail. Mm -hmm. Remove would allow you to kick that number out and get it out of the conference call and hang up on it. Yes? We were all connected, but I'm only showing conference and then two other people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It all depends on when you got to the list. Okay, the list will be what it is as of when you go to it. So if a couple of you already hung up, uh -huh. You only have who's on the call at the time you go uh, to the list. So you know and that's also why you have that update option, so that you can update if somebody beep beeps and hangs up, because you'll hear that, but you won't know who it was. You would have to update the list to see who's missing. It won't tell you who's gone. It'll only tell you who's still there, right? Go ahead and exit and cancel back out to the main screen. So that's conference calls. So we've done voicemail, we've done conference, I'm sorry, we haven't done voicemail. We've done conference and transfer and calling. <coughs> uh, we need to cover preferences, and then we'll talk about voicemail. So preferences. Uh, now we're going to talk about call history. Can we talk about call history? No. Okay, so we've got to talk about call history. Call history on the black phones. Okay, if you're a black phone user, it's going to be the settings button. That's the gear button. Go ahead and hit the gear button. On the gray phones, it's your directories button. It's the one that looks like a little book. Black phone users, you have one call history. The handset and the direction of the arrow tells you whether that was an inbound or an outbound call. Right? Gray phone users, you have three distinct directories. Missed, placed, and received calls. Cool. Black phone users, go ahead and exit back out to the main screen. Gray phone users, scroll down to Vassar directory. Black phone users, hit the directories button. That's the one that looks like a little book. I'm stuck in something. Uh, cancel. Directories. Vassar directory. So go ahead and go to the Vassar directory. 
Is everybody in the master directory? You should be looking at a field that says first name. Mm -hmm. On gray phones, you have first name, last name, and number. On black phones, if you scroll, you'll see first name, last name, and number. Text in using the keypad the first two letters of your first name and the first two letters of your last name in the appropriate fields. We did. We did. We did. We did. Yeah. We did this. Yes. Okay. We just wasn't following what you were saying. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. But the incoming calls are at the top, the missed the receipt. Yeah, incoming calls, missed calls, received calls are all in there. Cool. All right, go ahead and hang up. Or, uh, cancel out of the, the window. Exit, cancel, cancel, exit. Preferences. On the black phones, go ahead and go back into the gear button and scroll down one notch. That will be user preferences or user settings, something to that effect. You'll be able to go into that menu by hitting the select button in the middle of the jog arrow. On the gray phones, it's the settings button. Go ahead and hit the settings button, you're going to see user preferences. Below user preferences, you'll find a number of configuration options. You will not need to worry about those. Yeah. Go ahead and go into user preferences. You have at the top of the list rings, and below that you're going to have things like contrast and background image on the gray phones. On the black phones, you simply have uh, rings, contrast, contrast and, headset, side tone. and headset side tone, which you don't need to worry about. So go ahead and go into rings. And in the first option on all of the phones, you're going to find that there is a list. If you go one more layer deep, so go ahead and hit select on default ring, you're going to find that there are a list of 29 different ringtones. Everything from the fairly basic chirp to the fairly creepy, are you are there? You there? <laughs> oh, my God. oh no, it is actually, it, it's completely are creepy. Are you there? Yeah, that's creepy. Oh, you. <laughs> you can really mess with your boss on that, don't oh, you? Oh, okay. Oh, this one a little bit. Oh, God. I'm personally a fan of the Jamaica. Yeah, I just played it. Kind of dig the little steel drum thing going on. Oh, this is sick. Yeah. Over the edge, I think it's a big star. All right, go ahead and exit your way back out to the main screen. Exit, cancel, cancel, oh, exit back out to the main screen. Cancel, back. Back, exit, exit cancel. Exit. <laughs> now, there is another way to get out of the menu. You can just simply hit the settings button again, but it actually doesn't necessarily get you all the way out. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I have to just cancel, exit, because it's a much more uh, satisfying and secure approach. Let's talk about voicemail. Uh, voicemail has a couple of options that uh, the Cisco voicemail lady, who, by the way, is the person that greets you every time you hit the messages button, She's going to walk you through setting up your voicemail. You have a default PIN number that should have been delivered to you on the business size card when you got your phone. Okay. That default PIN number, I will tell you what it is because I see a couple of you shaking your head. You don't know what it is. It's okay. It is a highly complicated, highly secure number. It is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, That number again is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, that number should be changed. Obviously, that's not the number that you want to keep. Some people inevitably will. So if you're trying to break into somebody's voicemail account, you might as well, well try it. Right? Don't leave that number, please. The voicemail account, you have a maximum size limit of 2 gigabytes worth of space. Keeping in mind that a regular length CD is about 720 meg. That's actually a lot of space. right? And I say CD because that's really what we're talking about here. We are talking about MP3 files that you are going to see in your Vassar Gmail account. So you're going to see this appearing in your inbox. You're going to see messages. It's going to say voice message from. And then if we had caller ID, that will appear on the line. If we didn't, then it's just going to be the number. They look like this when you open them up. So Vassar Computing and Information Services at the top. Click to dial information about who it's from. Click to stream also. So I can stream it just like I'm streaming iHeartRadio or something on my phone, right? I can stream it on my computer, PC or Mac, desktop or laptop. 
I can stream it on my mobile device, my tablet, whatever. As long as you've got a data connection, you can click to stream. You can also, this is the bottom half, download the file. So if you know that this message is going to come back and bite you in the butt at the end of the semester, download the file and title it, save it out to a network drive. That's going to remove it out of the two gigabytes of storage that you have and save it for you and you know what it is and where it is. Right? As long as you don't forget it. Good so far. Click to dial. You can click to dial. That will initiate the call from your desk phone to whoever called you right there at the top, that number. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. I'll let that one settle in for a second because it didn't really settle in yet. I can wow. tell by the looks on your face. <laughs> when you click to dial, it's going to initiate a call from your desk phone to that person. And I don't care where you are when it happens. <laughs> You're at Starbucks on a Saturday morning drinking a cup of coffee going through your email on your phone and you click to dial that call initiated from your desk phone. Sweet. Right? This is an email. It's an email with a WAV file attached to it. Right? So you could forward this just like an email with the WAV file attached. And if you don't select this and delete it out of there, I will be able to initiate a call from your desk phone to the person that called you. What? Say that again. If you forward me this message and, you. Uh -huh. I and I click click to dial, I will be able to click to dial your desk phone to them. So don't forward anything to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, remove the click to dial. You need to remove both the picture and the word. Both are links. We forward messages, right? Oh, I think this is for you. Oh, please be aware of this, you know, all kinds of things. There's all kinds of reasons to forward voicemail messages. Just make sure that you remove the little click dot link. It? You just select it and delete it. Okay. Just like text. Okay. All it is is hyperlink. But both are hyperlinks, right? The word and the little picture. You have to remember both. Click to dot. It's kind of awesome. Mm -hmm. There are two things that the Denny Cisco voicemail lady is not very forthcoming about. They are found in the handouts. The handouts are available to you. I will give them to you if you absolutely desperately want them. Otherwise, save a tree. Go here. Grab the file. It's a PDF. But when, when you click to dial, mm -hmm. when you call on that person, what number shows up in their caller ID? Your number. Your, my personal number. Office. Your desk phone number. Because it's your That's desk phone that called. That's bizarre. If you're sitting at your desk, it's a matter of convenience, right? You can just click to dial and you pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. And you can either let it be on speaker if that's appropriate, or when they answer, or when they, the voicemail answers, then you can pick up the handset and leave them a message, right? It's just important to understand that click to dial only works with your desk phone and the number that called you. So if you're not at your desk phone when you do it, it's your desk phone that called them on speakerphone so they can answer and say hello to your empty office. Starbucks. Yeah, exactly. So just be aware. On the handout, when you take a look at it on the website, in this middle section at the top, you're going to find that there are a series of options to control the message playback. These are the only options that the Cisco voicemail will, lady will not tell you about. These options allow you to control the speed of the playback. And we've all had that message, right? Or somebody is kind of plotting, like bossing the cow to get to the message. It takes them forever to get to the point until suddenly, miraculously, at the end when they give you the number, they actially speed up. <laughs> yeah, you can give me a call back at uh, 845 five, Excuse me? <laughs> you can hit the seven key to rewind five seconds every time you hit it. You can hit the four key to slow the playback down. Good. If you hit the four key at the maximum, which is four times, it will make him sound a little bit drunk. So if you're having a bad day, get some giggles out of that. <laughs> you can slow it down so that you can get the number. Likewise, if you need to hear the message again, you want to get some details, but you don't need to do it at the speed that they were talking at, you can hit the six key to speed it up. It will make him sound a little bit like Alvin and the Chipmunks. Again, the giggling will too. But you get the idea. There's some options in there. Those are all the buttons on the phone. Yes. 
please. All right, so the question from voicemail is, Yes. now we can say that after four rings, it can go to voicemail. Still or ever. to go directly to voicemail. Set it up to go directly to voicemail. Is, will that you can forward to voicemail. It will not work in this room. Please, please don't bother trying it. You're not going to get anywhere. Okay. Mm -hmm. The process is call forward all, CFWD all. Mm -hmm. It's on the phone. Go ahead and find it. Mm -hmm. It's on the soft case. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's on the, the display case. And then you would hit the messages button. The envelope. Go ahead and hit the speakerphone button to hang up on it. As I mentioned, it's not going to work in this room. <laughs> Thank you, though. That was awesome for me. I enjoyed that but, but still, I'll give you the option to say, go to voicemail after the four rings. It's one or the other. It's, it's either answer automatically after four to five rings or send it directly to voicemail. If you are forwarding to voicemail, your phone will not ring and it will not register missed calls. You're going directly to voicemail. Now, can you do that in the middle of a ring? I shouldn't ask that, but I'm just wondering. Well, so that, that actually brings up another point. The only button we have It might be an really outside call that you don't want to take right away, so mm -hmm. push them right through. Well, so there's two different ways you can do it, and I don't know how many of you are aware of this. This option also exists on cell phones. On your cell phone, there is a button somewhere, depending on what kind of cell phone you have, that will silence the ringer but allow the 20 seconds of ringing to continue to its fruition, right? Mm -hmm. To continue the normal cycle. And if you do that, the person that is calling you will not know that you didn't answer by choice, mm -hmm. right? If you, uh, if you hit the ignore button on your cell phone, it will go instantly to voicemail. And they will know because they heard a ring and a half and then got sent to voicemail. The same is true of the Cisco phones. On your phone display right now, there's a DND button. Please press it. On the black phones, it now says DND is on. Mm. The gray phones are more verbose. It says do not disturb is active. <laughs> it means the same thing, right? What that's going to do for you, if you got a call right now, your phone would beep one time. It would flicker and have a call available for you for 20 seconds. And I, the caller, will have no idea that you are ignoring me. Okay. Right? Because I'll get 20 seconds. Normal ring cycle. Okay. Go ahead and hit DNG again. If you got a call right now, the phone will ring as it normally will, but you can still hit DND. DND would silence the ringer, but allow the 20 second cycle to continue to its fruition. Okay. Right? I like that. There is also one other option, and we saw it when you had the phone calls actively ringing on your phone. That's why I asked you to look at the phones when they were ringing. And that button is I divert on the gray phones. You don't see it now because it's not ringing. Or divert on the black phones. And that will shunt it directly to voicemail, silencing the ringer, and sending it immediately to voicemail. And they will know if they're paying attention. <laughs> and they may walk over to your desk because they know you're at your desk. So be aware. <laughs> okay. What is that the same way Yeah, it will behave the same way if you're on a call. So call waiting again is one beep to let you know that, hey, there's an incoming call. Look at the phone. And when you look at the phone, you decide, oh, you know what, I, 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 my current call is more important. I'll let that go to voicemail. If you don't do anything to it, it'll just continue for the 20 seconds of ringing and go to voicemail. Go ahead. I have a completely off topic. Ah, go ahead. Should I be nervous? When my first, the phone was first put on my desk, mm -hmm. it had a little display thing. Now it doesn't anymore. Should I be nervous about that? No, you should tell me so I can wheel, deal with them. Oh, oh, thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> um, Both Jen Dan and I'm, I. And I. Yours went it? completely blank? Yeah. It's been blank for weeks now. All right. Thank like, you. like that? I yeah. sent out an email telling everybody to let me know if anything changes. So I'll let them know. Sorry. Yeah, let us know. Um, All of them. I have a long running list of changes that need to happen. Dave Newell is aware of it. We're, we're on it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for letting me know. Perfect. Other questions?
anybody doesn't have any other questions, you're welcome to stick around. Otherwise, thanks for your time. Hopefully, this was a good use of it. Um, my name's Doug. We've got uh, a little bit of ground to cover today. Uh, for those of you that haven't met me, I'm Doug. I'm here from Core BTS. Some of you have met me. We had a laugh yesterday, and some of you today even with the phone system. Again, this is not phone system training. We are doing that separately. If you have not signed up for it, please sign up for it. Thursday is a little tight. Um, both of the Thursday sessions at this point I'm pretty sure are going to be full. Friday, though, I'm, I'm looking at a fair amount of space. So there's definitely time on Friday, and I know that there's some open spots next week. And next week is all phone training. Uh, we're in, we go through the hardware, how to use the hardware, what's new about voicemail, and all kinds of stuff, right? Uh, today I'm mostly going to be sitting in the chair because it's mostly on the PC. This room is not set up for PCs because we've got two phones at every of this, one of the, the stations, right, at every chair. And there's no space for PCs. Furthermore, for those of you that are going to be using the phone only to log into the call agent software, we would have to have your phone here for each of the individuals at each of the sessions. That's just not technically possible, right? So I'll be showing you how we're doing it, and I'll be walking you through what's going on. Um, with the call agent software, you're going to be logging into a call agent queue, right? An ACD queue, an agent an automatic call <coughs> delivery tool. And if you've ever called in and heard the message, and I know we all have, says, your call is important to us. It will be answered in the order it was received. Thank you. Please continue to call. That's kind of where we're at. You get to have another chair. There is left, and that's mine. My one, I think, is for phone. Yeah, there's room up here for one. We're not actually using the phones today. Okay. So you can have my chair. Thank you. You want me to try to look for a chair for you? Doug? I'll be. Thank you. You want a chair? I can What's talk. the. Uh, what's your name again? I'm sorry. Mary Carol. Mary Carol. Stark. Stark. S T A R K. Thanks, Mary So, uh, my understanding, what I've been told, is that everybody that's going to be using just the phone to log into the software is going to be issued the gray Cisco 7962 phone. At this point, you should be nodding, saying, yes, that is correct, mister. Right? Okay. Uh, that's the gray phone. You know, the black phone is the Cisco 6921. You don't need to worry about the model numbers. The black phone and the gray phone will be just fine. This is an IP phone emulator. It's a software-driven tool. It is a phone. We call it a soft phone, it's a software telephone, soft phone. That would allow me to make and receive calls from anywhere in the world. Currently connected to the Vassar system, although we could re rewire it to be whatever. Um, we're using this so that I can produce something on screen that everybody can see. The services button, which we talked about during phone training, offers these three options for those phones that are configured thusly where I have agent login, agent login failover, which I'm not even sure why we're using it because I don't know what it does here in our environment, and agent one button login. One button login means that we have saved and stored your credentials, your username and your password on the system, and if it changes, it needs to change here as well. Right? So when we use the one button login, we simply click the one button, and we're logged in. That's it. Done. You're not ready. Uh, oh, <laughs> I'm already going to get some help. There we go. Now we're logged in. Um, and we're not ready. It says that. Not ready. It will say that on your screens as well. Although you won't have the color background, it's going to be black and white. Um, the not ready status is going to log us into the queue. And if we're logged into the queue, calls can stack while we're logged into the queue. So we don't want to be logged into the queue necessarily if we're not ready to take calls. And why I say that is we don't want to go to not ready and then go to lunch. Because if nobody's ready, calls will continue to queue until somebody starts answering them or they start hanging up one or the other. If we're all logged in but not ready. Right? From here, we can update the status of the queue 
which would show us how long the oldest call has been waiting and how many calls are waiting. We can change our state, not the state of New York or Connecticut. We can change our readiness state. We can go to ready or not ready. We can log in or log out from here. So I would log out or go to ready. I'll go to ready. Now it shows me that I'm ready. And if I go to somewhere else on the phone, for example, I hit the services button again, I'm still ready. Although there is no appearance on the phone to a significant, uh, to indicate that. There's no way I'm going to know, right? It's just, it's there. If I go back into services, I'm not even going to see it here. I have to actually go back into the one button login and then change my state again in order to see that. I would encourage you as much as possible to leave that up or to go back to it as necessary. Just so that you're reminded that that's the current status that you're in if you're waiting for calls. I don't know what the call volumes are on the individual call queues that you're going to be assigned to. If you're getting a call an hour, then you may want to have that up. You want to go back to it in between other work that you're doing. If you're getting call after call after call, you probably won't need to worry about remembering that you're on the phone. You'll be on the phone a lot. That'll be enough to remind you that you're on the phone a lot. Self-fulfilling little prophecy there. Um, we can change our state. We can also go to call data. This would tell us about information from the active call. We can change our state and go to not ready, and that shows us not ready at the bottom. We can change our state and log out. If we log out and we exit one more tier, then we would see that one button login option again. go back into the services button, right? The one button login is saving you from some extra work. The extra work is this. If I was to try and log in, I've got to use the capitals and the lowercase letters with a reasonable amount of practice, right? Guess how you're going to put your password in? With uppers and lowers and special characters. Because the one, the star, and the pound all have between six and ten different special characters that you're going to have to toggle through in order to initiate the login sequence. This is why we're doing the one button login. This is why you're going to want to use your phone to log in as much as possible. For those of you that are using the phone only login, uh, the terms that you're going to hear are phone only agent or IPPA, which is IP phone agent, meaning that you're not using this software that I'll show you in just a moment. It's not bad as long as you're on your phone. And what I don't know, because we haven't had a conversation with the supervisor yet, the speakerphone button hang up on it, is that we don't know, um, I don't know what the terms are of your functionality in the call centers. Are you going to be logging out for lunch or are you just going to go to not ready? I would encourage you to be logged out for lunch, but that's a supervisory decision. See, if you're logged in for lunch, but not there, you're not ready, calls will continue to queue, even if nobody's there. Because the system knows that you're there, there, right? An actual appropriate air quote moment. Um, if you're not ready, the, the system is going to allow calls to queue because it thinks you're not ready means you're going to be back at any second to start answering calls again, even if you're across the street having pizza, right? Good pizza across the street, but like you guys don't know that. So questions about this tool so far? That post-lunch poem is fully set in. What is our password? Your password is your current network password. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow is exactly the reaction you should have at that moment. Oh, wow is exactly right. Because now we're talking about an uppercase, lowercase, special characters, minimum, what, eight character password that you're going to have to text in with the phone? That's why we say, oh, well, it's still got to meet the parameters of an appropriate 
an appropriately secure and complex LDAP password. So it's got to have eight characters, uppercase, lowercase, special characters, right? It's got to meet all those terms. And guess what? It gets to change every 60, 90, whatever days that you have to change yours. How often do you have to change your passwords? I don't know. Sometimes. Typical college campus. <laughs> You're exactly the same as anybody else when it comes to that, when it comes to higher education. Uh, 180 days is the typical average at maximum. Yeah. Um, when you step away from your desk just for like restroom, whatever, mm -hmm. should you log out or just not ready? If you're just going to go to the bathroom, fill your water cup, whatever, then what I would do would be to just go to not ready. Okay. I wouldn't log out. I'm going to be back right away. Now, if I'm going to go over to the cafeteria or whatever it is across the, the commons, and I'm going to grab a, a cup of coffee or a salad or something for lunch and then come back, I probably ought to log out. And that's that five minute is okay, but 15 minutes probably 